Hello, my name is Pooja. Welcome to this week's episode of Around the World. Geopolitics is a commonly used term in international politics. It is often used to denote the importance of a particular region. These days, this term is also being used extensively for the Indo-Pacific region. The reason behind this is the meeting of the Pacific Islands Forum, which is being held after a gap of three years. Recently, it was held in Fiji at a time when the Indo-Pacific region is grappling with challenges such as the COVID-19 pandemic, climate change, maritime security, illegal fishing, and U.S.-China rivalry. Various countries of the Pacific region have started questioning the role of the Pacific Island Forum in dealing with these challenges and have decided to leave this forum. Against this backdrop, the U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris was invited to address the 51st meeting of the Pacific Islands Forum. This invitation is being seen as an advantage for the U.S. in the Pacific region and a setback for China. Taking advantage of this opportunity, Vice President Kamala Harris made several announcements to enhance U.S. engagement with the Pacific region. She has announced to provide $60 million annual aid and to open embassies in Tonga and Kiribati. Moreover, she emphasized on restarting the closed U.S. embassy in Fiji. She opined that the Indo-Pacific countries are leaving PIF due to China. She also stated that China is polarizing the region through its economic, diplomatic network and is creating enmity between the Pacific countries. However, the US is trying to unite the entire Pacific region through this forum. In such a scenario, very significant questions arise. We will try to find answers to these questions in today's story. But first of all, let us know about PIF, Pacific Islands Forum. The Pacific Islands Forum was established in 1971. It is a premier organization for political and economic affairs of the region. Before 2000, it was known as the South Pacific Forum. It aims at promoting cooperation between governments, cooperating with international agencies and developing peace, harmony, security, social inclusion and prosperity among member states. It consists of 18 member states namely Australia, Cook Islands, Republic of Micronesia, Fiji, French Polynesia, Kiribati, Nauru, New Caledonia, New Zealand, New, Palau, Papua New Guinea, Republic of Marshall Islands, Samoa, Solomon Islands, Tonga, Tuvalu and Vanuatu. Its permanent headquarters is located in Suva, the capital of Fiji. Its annual meeting is also held in Suva. The annual meeting is followed by ministerial-level talks with several non-regional countries including Canada, China, the European Union, France, Great Britain, Japan, South Korea, Malaysia and Philippines, and the United States. The Bo Declaration and Biketawa Declaration are the major declarations related to PIF. These declarations reflect the principles and commitments of PIF. Now, a pertinent question arises that why the US is opening its embassies in Toga and Kiribati. Actually, the US is striving hard to increase its dominance in the region. For this purpose, it is constantly at loggerheads with China. The US decision of opening its embassies in Toga and Kiribati is another move in this direction. The US had almost stopped paying attention to the Pacific region for the last few decades. Consequently, China has greatly expanded its dominance in this region. The growing dominance of China in the Pacific region is now posing challenges to the US. Recently, China completed the construction of a major embassy in Nukualofa, Tonga. Hence, the US is also trying to cover its lost grounds by increasing its presence in the Indo-Pacific through embassy diplomacy. For this purpose, the US also has started some other initiative. The recently launched PBP, that is Partners in the Blue Pacific Initiative, is an example of the initiatives taken by the US. It has been jointly launched by the US, Australia, New Zealand, UK and Japan for promoting more effective and efficient cooperation in the Pacific Islands. Furthermore, Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi 
is also trying to register China's presence by meeting with the leaders of 10 Pacific Island countries for countering the US in the region. China has also held a meeting with these leaders to sign a security agreement in May 2022. However, China did not succeed in persuading these leaders for signing the agreement. If China would have become successful in its efforts, then its influence in the region would have escalated considerably. It would also have gained an edge over the US and its regional powers, Australia and New Zealand in the region. The US has now become aware of China's intentions. It doesn't want to repeat the same mistakes of ignoring the Pacific region. Hence, the US wants to increase its presence in the Pacific region once again. Australia is also facing the brunt of Chinese aggression in the Pacific region. Therefore, it is also trying to cement its relations with the Pacific countries by increasing dialogue with them. However, Australia is not the only country solving the issues related to the Pacific region through dialogue. Almost all the countries are making efforts in this direction at their levels. Disturbed by this geopolitical competition, the Pacific leaders have called for an end to the geopolitical tug of war between the US and its allies and China as it disturbs their internal peace and territorial sovereignty. Kiribati has also announced its withdrawal from the Pacific Islands Forum by making these allegations. Then, another pertinent question arises that why did the US choose Tonga and Kiribati for opening its embassies? When we look at the world map, then we find that Tonga is located in the southern part of the Pacific Ocean, while Kiribati is located almost in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Tonga is located adjacent to Australia and New Zealand, the US allies. Kiribati is quite crucial from the geopolitical point of view due to its position. The superpowers of the world intend to have better relations with Tonga and Kiribati due to their geopolitical position. China has recently completed the construction of a large embassy in Nukualofa, Tonga. Moreover, Kiribati is not only giving up membership of the Pacific Islands Forum under Chinese influence, but is also shunning its earlier US-backed policies. However, the Chinese Foreign Ministry has recently stated that Beijing had no role in Kiribati's withdrawal from the Pacific Islands Forum. It was also stated that China and the Pacific Island Forum have had good cooperative relations for years as China doesn't interfere in the internal affairs of the Pacific Island countries. It also advocates greater solidarity and closer cooperation among the Pacific Island Forum for common development. However, former Kiribati President Anot Tong dismissed China's claims and doubted that Kiribati's agreement to work with China also included exclusive access of Chinese ships to the protected areas of the Phoenix Islands. Phoenix Island is currently designated as the largest marine protected area of the world. Furthermore, US Vice President Kamala Harris has also promised that the US will implement strong policies to increase its participation in the Pacific region. For all these reasons, the US has selected Tonga and Kiribati for opening its embassies. Countering China in the Pacific region would be extremely challenging for the US as for various Pacific Island countries, China's intrusion is a non-issue. Several Pacific Island governments have also categorically rejected the notions of Chinese expansionism. Hence, it will be interesting to see how successful the US will be in augmenting its dominance in the Pacific region. This is all for this episode. Let us now see today's question. What is the Pacific Islands Forum? What are the implications of active participation of the US in this forum? Explain.